Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you are blessed. I hope you guys are reading your word. Today is a day, I've had this lesson for a couple of days, and I don't want to go through my lessons until I am very thoroughly educated in them, and I understand everything that I am trying to teach, and everything that uh, I think is important in these, these kind of scriptures. And we are... You know, this is uh, our family today. We're actually, we're struggling today. We're actually struggling today because today is a Shabbat. <clears throat> and um, we had a cow fall ill yesterday. And we live, we live on 30 acres in the middle of a jungle. And so the cow fell ill quite a ways away from us. And so all day yesterday was spent getting water and getting everything. We She can't get up and it's one of our... our our only big milk cows that we have. And so we're struggling as a family. And, um, unfortunately Shabbat came and last night at, at, uh, and I'm not saying unfortunately Shabbat came on, it's great. It came, but unfortunately it came when we had a downed animal. And so every Shabbat, we, we never, we don't work. We don't leave the house. We don't do anything. And so the Shabbat's a little bit different for us. Um, because the Bible has given us precedent on how to deal with an oxen that is in a ditch and things of that nature. And so we got up at early this morning and we uh, took a bunch of grass and a bunch of water and a bunch of other stuff up to our, our sick cow. She's still alive. Thank goodness. Um, and we're, we're trying to get her meds and we're trying to get this to survive. But these things, when they happen on a Shabbat, I feel extremely guilty. I feel extremely, um, I feel extremely bad. And, um, I, all I can do is, is beg my creator for forgiveness um, because we are breaking a Shabbat, regardless of our auctions falling in the ditch or not. We are working on the Sabbath. We are um, we are doing what we shouldn't be doing, and I don't know any other way around it. But while my family is up uh, administering some IVs and trying to get some fluids in there, I thought this would be a tremendous time to go through um, a lesson here. A lesson, and as you guys can see, this is one of these this is one of these lessons that you must understand the translations of the Bible, right? We must understand where the translators fall and where the translators succeed. And one of the things that when you translate from Hebrew and Greek, it's not, it's not the same. The trans, that's why you have a hundred different versions of Bibles with a hundred different kinds of uh, translations. And they all say various things. A lot of them are the close, but there's a, uh, there's a lot of things that aren't close. Right. And, um, when we're talking about a camel that it's, it's easier that and you guys, you guys know where I'm going with this. You guys know where I'm going. It, it's easier that a, a camel goes through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. Right. And so those are things we've heard all our lives. We've heard everything like this. And it's, it's, it's something that we must use other versions of Bibles as well. If you stick with only the King or you stick with only one version of it, you're going to get lost at certain things. And there's a couple things today that if I didn't have a different version of Bible, I, I would be uh, not understanding, right? I would not be understanding. And these old camels, you know, they, uh, um, <laughs> you got to know where we're going with the translations. Let's begin on this. I hope you guys have some fun. I hope that I can make this an interesting teaching for you guys. Um, we don't want to get stuck, right? We don't want to be that guy that's stuck in a uh, in a needle. And, you know, what What are riches, right? What do you call riches, right? You might have a, a guy that has $500 in his account and he considers that rich. And, you know, but there's, there's also guys with hundreds of thousands of dollars in their account. And they, you know, when you're talking about the kingdom, the kingdom is, is not, it's made up of people with like minds of children. Um, and if you see children, a normal child isn't a greedy child by, by any means. I mean, most kids will want to share. Most people want to do this stuff. Let's get into this. Let's see exactly what we're talking about. Mark 10. And he arose from thence and came into the coast of Yahud by the farther side of the Arden. And the people resort unto him again. And... As he, as he was wont, he taught them again. Okay, so right out of the gate, I can't even make it past verse 1. Because I don't understand what as he was wont. I don't understand what that means. So let's take it over here. 
Mark 10, on the, the king is on the left and the NIV is on the right. Now, if you look into this, and the people resort unto him again, as he was wont, he taught them again. What do you mean, as he was wont? Now, let's take a look over on the right-hand side of this under the NIV, and we will go with this. Let's take a look. <clears throat> Jesus, Yahushua then left that place and went into the region of Judea across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him. Now listen, and as was his custom, he taught them. So as he was won't means <laughs> as his custom was. So this is why you must have several versions of Bibles around to understand what they mean. We can't take one verse out of context and make a, a doctrine out of it because it doesn't work like that. Verse two. Now these these perishing the the the, the Pharisees. They, these guys will never leave our Messiah alone. It's like these guys will never. Here they came again, and the Pharisee came to him and asked him, "Is it lawful for a man to put away his woman?" Tempting him. Right? And guys, when you know the Torah, when you read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, we know what we need to do, right? We understand how a divorce would work based upon the Torah. So these guys are tempting him, the Pharisees, the, the Pharisees again, and he answered and said unto them, what did Moshe command you? And they said, Moshe suffered to write a suffer of divorcement and to put her away. And Yahushua answered and said unto them, for the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of creation, Elohim made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his woman. And they too shall be one flesh. So then they are no more two, but one flesh. So this is very interesting, guys. This is extremely interesting because we... I, what I could tell you from my life with my wife, and we've been married like 25 plus years. I, I've lost count years and years ago. I've lost count. I have no idea. We've been married 25 years. And um, I will tell you, prior to that, I was married and I had a son and we got divorced. And that was when I was 18 years old. Now, I'm some 45 years old, somewhere around there now. And um, it was shortly after that that I fell in love with my wife. I married her. I had three boys. Um, we've been together the entire time. And I'll tell you the only secret that I know that this is successful, our relationship is successful, is because of the Torah, because of the scriptures, because my wife is a extremely God-fearing woman. She's a Proverbs 31 woman. And she serves me as a wife should serve her her husband and I serve her as a husband should serve his wife, right? We are in my eyes, we are an ultimate team. We have always been a team. We have, we have, we have put away our disagreements. We have put away the crazy stuff, um, of youth where you just fight over useless stuff. And you know, one of the secrets I believe is that if you are faithful to your spouse, that is where it all begins. If your eyes start seeking elsewhere and the first uh, argument that you guys have that tests your waters, you're going to be off and you're going to destroy everything that you have. And I will tell you firsthand, there is nothing better than a wife of your youth who is a teammate with you, who is, who is absolutely on the same page as you. And unless you guys as a family are reading the Torah as a family and unless you guys have the same, same goals... And guys, we are at the end of the age. Our goals right now should be that our families and ourselves are accepted into the kingdom to come, right? It's not, it's not about, uh, you know, careers and it's not about um, this and that. It, it is right now, it is strictly about survival. And so if we are looking into the game of survival and our family is entrenched and your family is entrenched into the Bible and the Torah and different things of that nature, you will be far stronger than anything you've ever had. My, my friends, men who are out there, guys, don't call yourself a man if you're an adulteress. If you're an adulterer, an adulteress, and a woman, don't consider yourself a woman. Like you, If you are a woman in adultery, you are a bad woman. If you are a man in adultery, you are a bad man. You are a bad person. You're, you're, a, you're a homewrecker. You're taking, what, you're, you're taking your word and you're destroying your word. 
Your word was that you would you would be with your woman and your man till death do us part. When you're out there committing adultery, when you are touching another woman, when you're touching another man, you are you're breaking wedlock. You're breaking it. And there's no, there's no way around it. And so when you guys let your eyes slip into pornography, when you guys let your eyes slip into uh, the advertisements on TV, right? I haven't watched TV for like years, 10 years or something like that. When we see stuff on TV, it looks like softcore porn to me. I see an advertisement when I'm walking around somewhere or I see something, somebody has a TV on, and there's an advertisement that comes on, it looks like softcore porn. The people have no clothes on. And I guess that is where we have come. You know, even when I turned off TV 10 years ago, it was still very vile. It was like, oh man, my, my soul has lost because of the evil that I have let my eyes look onto, right? As we're not supposed to be watching HBO. We're not supposed to be watching all these nasty, nasty TV shows, and these soap operas and these things, other people's fake lives. You know what? We need to be in the Torah. We need to be looking at the people who have successfully done it. Moshe, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, those guys are Messiah, right? Those are our examples. That's what we should be doing. Shut those TVs off. Shut that outside influence off. If you're surfing pornography, stop that. Stop that. Women and men, if you're surfing pornography, stop that. It's evil. Verse 9. What Yahuwah, what Aleftah, therefore Elohim has joined together, let not man put asunder. Verse 9. And in the house, his Talmudian asked him again, of the same matter. Now, they were with him, right? And they he was just talking to the Pharisees. He was duking out with the Pharisees. And they were they were messing with him. They're like, oh, how, you know. And if you think that you can have a marriage and if you can just serve a divorce like that, right? That makes your, that makes your marriage useless. There should be no such thing as a divorce in any marriage because our creator has, has built this so that a proper marriage, you guys do cleave together and you create an enormous team. Right When you are in sync with your wife and you guys are in sync with your husbands and when you are in sync with our creator, your lives become amazing. It becomes amazing. Verse 11, and he said unto them, whosoever shall put away his woman and marry another breaks wedlock against her, right? You break commandments. And if a woman shall put away her man and be married to another, she breaks wedlock, right? And they brought, so that's, that's huge. That's huge, guys. If you're wondering about marriage and you're wondering about any of this stuff, guys, get back to your wife. Get back to your man. Cleave to them. Find that love. Find that lust of their youth when you were in love, when you guys had their heart. Because if you, if you had it at one point, you can have it again. You can find uh, a, a life that is in sync. But if you guys are not in the Torah, if you're not in the Bible, you're not going to find a life of sync. You're going to be able to do things that you wouldn't normally do because you're not under the Torah. Right? When you're under the Torah, you're not going to go be an adulterer. You're not going to go be a homewrecker. You're not going to be able to be that guy that is an anti-hero in the eyes of your kids because you're, you don't know how to raise your kid. I would rather see a, a broke family that is just barely able to survive than a broken family, right? Because a, a family that is broke and they don't have any resources, they got the love, right? If you have love, money does not matter. It does not matter, right? Love will find a way. Verse 13, and they, they brought young children to him that he should touch them, and his Talmudian rebuked those that brought them. But when Yahushua saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of Elohim. Right? Verse 15, Amen. I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Elohim as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Guys, what are the qualities of a little child, Right? They, a child that is raised up properly, even a little child, it's not going to tell lies. If you've trained them up not to tell lies, they're not going to lie to you. They're not going to steal from you. They're not going to be. You must train your children up in the way that, that they should be taught. And there's only one way to do that. That's through the Torah, right? That's exactly what it was. We've never been called to take our kids to a government indoctrinated camp and drop them off, right? The people of old, there's no such thing as schools, Look at the evil of the education system. Look at the evil of we go out and women work, men work, and they go drop their kids off at a government indoctrinated school. <laughs> and you think that's a family. You think you're building up somebody. You know what? The kids are supposed to be tied to your hip, right? And that's one of the things I, I homeschool my kids 
to, to the end. We ho I homeschooled them all the way through college work, and I <laughs> they graduated when they were like 12 years old, right? We had we spent days on this stuff, years on this stuff, and I took them all through school. And ever since then, they've been hooked to my hip, right? Whenever I go kill a cow, they go with me. Whenever I go do anything at all, they are with me. They are part of my farm. They're part of my life. I have built them, and this is what we were supposed to do, right? We are supposed to keep our kids close. We're supposed to teach them. You're supposed to be the teachers, right? The women in the kitchen teaching their kids and girls and stuff how to, how to, how to cling and how to cook, how to sew. And, and women, don't, don't get angry at me. That's, that's part of the job, right? Men should cling. Men should do that stuff as well. But I mean, if you're a fully functioning house in a system, then the woman is, is, is providing the food and the cooking of it. The man is providing the, 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 the food from the outside. The woman is providing it on the inside. And that is the perfect harmony of it. And that's what I found is a perfect harmony. So guys, we must be as little children when we're in. Verse 16, and he took them upon his arms, put his hands upon them and blessed them. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good rabbi, what shall I do to it that I may in inherit eternal life? And this is, this is, again, one of these Trinity things. This is a Trinity breaker verse right here. There is no God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's, that's blasphemy. That is anti-Bible. That is, that is the doctrines of the Creed of Nicaea of 325 AD. <laughs> because what does it says right here? It says, and Yahushua said unto him, why do you call me good? There is none good but one. That is Elohim. Now, if, 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 he was too, if he was the same person, he would go, oh, yeah, 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 I'm the good one. But they called nobody good but Elohim. Even the son says he's not good. That it's the father. That's that. Verse 19. And he's talking right here. He's talking about the rich man, right? This rich guy that is came and uh, he's like, hey, what can I do to serve you? Verse 19. And you know the commandments. Do not break wedlock. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor your father and mother. This verse right here is where the Christians will take this and they go, oh, this is the only, this is the only commandments that we have. He's not saying, he didn't say, well, he, he, these are the only commandments. He listed off a couple of the commandments, right? A couple of them. <laughs> if this is the only commandments we have, then I guess it's okay to drink the blood and to marry our sister and to see our moms naked, which are all against the Torah, right? But you got to know the Torah to know that. Verse 20, and he answered and said unto him, Rabbi, all these have I observed from my youth, the commandments above. Then Yahushua, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatsoever you have and give to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven and come. Take up your cross and follow me. And he was sad at the saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. Now, this is where I want to get into this point and try to, to nail this home for you guys on the translations, right? The translations of everything are so important that when we start thinking that, you know, a rich man, that a camel is able to go through the eye of a needle easier than it is for a rich man to get in the Shimaim, that's crazy. That's hard. How, how do we deal with this? <clears throat> and here we go. And he was, uh, he was sad at the grieving and went away grieved for he had great possessions. Verse 23, and Yahushua looked around about and said unto him, his Talmudian, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of heaven? And the Talmudian were astonished at his words. But Yahushua answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in the riches to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Here it goes. Here's the answer. Verse 25. It is easier for a rope to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Elohim. There's a little bit more realism, right? When we figure out the translation, it wasn't a camel the entire time. It was a rope. But nearly every translation has a camel. So how do they figure out that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle when it's actually a rope? Verse 26. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? And Yahushua looking upon them said, with men it is impossible, but not with Elohim. For with Elohim, all things are possible. Then Kepha began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all, and we have followed you. Now Peter's sitting there, hey, look, we've done everything. And Yahushua answered and said, Amen. Now this verse right here, let's look at 29 and 30. And this is one of these verses that unless you go to another version, it is hard to understand this. Let's read it, and then we'll go understand it. And Yahushua answered and said, 
Amen, I say unto you, there is no man left that has left house or, or excuse me, let's, let's read that, I missed it. There is no man that has left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or woman or children or lands left off for my sake and the Besorahs. Besora is good news. But, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands and persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. What in the world does this mean? Verse 29. Let's take a look at it in the NIV so we can understand what we're seeing. Verse 29. Truly I tell you, Yahushua replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. So he's just saying right here, what, it, what he's supposed to be saying is that the, those who, who follow me are going to be poor in this earth, but they're going to be rich in the next life. Verse 31, but many that are first shall be last. And they were going in the way, going up to Jerusalem. We're almost done, guys. And Yahushua went before them, and they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. And he took again the twelve and began to tell them what things should happen unto him. Again, this is the third time. This is the third time he's told them, he predicted his own death. Say, 33, saying, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and the son of Adam shall be delivered unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him to the other nations, right? Hand him over to Rome, Romans, right? Verse 34, and they shall mock him, shall scourge him, and shall spit upon him, and shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. And Yaakov and Yochanan, the sons of Zabadi, came unto him saying, Rabbi, what would that you should do for us whatsoever we should desire? So we have him sitting here explaining how he is probably in just a little bit going to be delivered up to the Romans, and he's able to see this. Our Messiah, Yahushua, is able to see his own death, right? He knows what's going on. But then we have John, Jacob and John, and um, out of nowhere, they're like, hey, what, what can, will you, you hook me up with a favor, right? Verse 36, and he said unto them, what would ye that I should do for you? Verse 37, they said unto him, grant unto us that we may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left hand in your glory. But Yahushua said unto them, ye know not what, ye, what a left tie ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of? And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, oh yeah, oh yeah, no problem. We can. These guys do have no idea what they're saying. They have no idea. We can. And Yahushua said unto them, ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. And with the baptism that I am baptized with, with all ye should be baptized. So he's like, yeah, you're going to be all executed to death. You're all going to be punished to the end. You're all going to be owned, which is what happened to our Messiah. He got owned for a moment. Right. And he only got owned because he allowed himself to get owned. Right. He, he gave our, his life for us. Verse 40. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with Yaakov and Yochan. John and John and, and, and Jacob were in trouble. Verse 42. But Yahushua called them to him and said unto them. Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the other nations exercise lordship over them and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. Now, this is kind of hard. This is one of these. I, it, it's hard. It's hard to figure this stuff out exactly what he's saying. And so I enjoy reading this stuff out of the other things. Now, verse 42 right here, 42, 43, and 44. We'll take that. Okay, Jesus called together. Yahushua called together and said, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. So basically, whoever is, is, uh, who runs them shows it. Yeah, yeah, we are the rulers. And their high officials exercise authority over them, right? Not so with you. Instead, Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be a slave of all. Right? Slave of the son of all. We're almost done, guys. For, verse 45. 
For even the son of Adam came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And they came to Jericho. And as they went out of Jericho with his Talmudian and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Yahushua the Netzri, Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Yahushua, son of David, have mercy on me. And he charged him that he should hold his peace. People were like, quiet, quiet, this is the man. Don't quiet, this guy is so important. Don't do it. This guy, he couldn't do it. But he cried more. The more a great deal, son of David, have mercy on me. And Yahushua stood still and commanded him to be called. This guy is sitting on the side of the road, Yahushua. And all of a sudden, Yahushua answers him. And he called him. And they called the blind man saying unto him, hey, be a good comfort. Rise. He calls you. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Yahushua. And Yahushua answered and said unto him, What will you that I should do unto you? The blind man said unto him, Adonai, that I might receive my sight. And Yahushua said unto him, Go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Yahushua in the way. Guys, the Bible is full of amazing scriptures. It is full of amazing things. But it is also something we must seek out. We can't be spoon-fed this stuff. We must read our scriptures. We must understand what is going on. Guys, you, shouldn't, you should be reading this Torah. Today's a Shabbat. Today's a funky Shabbat. I only have one of my kids here. Everybody else is long distance away trying to revive a cow, which I pray to Yah. He does not curse us for. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still breaking commandments. And um, this is why we absolutely have to have the Messiah we have to have a Messiah. It's not willingly, right? We don't willingly go out and work on Shabbat. We don't do it. But you, you, we must have the, the blood of the Messiah because it is by that blood. When we have a day like this, I can't undo it. I have broken the Torah regardless whatever happened, right? I am breaking the Torah by tending to my animals outside of our house and, and working like this on Shabbat. And um, that is why we have the blood of the Messiah, <laughs> things like this. It's not so we can go surf our pornography and be an adulterer and be an evil person and then plead the blood and then go do it and plead the blood, do it, plead the blood, right? It's not a vicious, it's not a sin card. We are not able to sin like this. And so we must check our hearts. We must check our minds and check ourselves. Guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful Shabbat. Thank you guys so much for listening to those who have made it to the very end. Much love to you all. Shabbat Shalom.